Cress rod adjusting tools. It's uh, about everything you'll need there. Some of them take screwdrivers, some of them you can do it with sockets. So let's talk truss rods. Well, welcome back, YouTube heads, to the host that never sleeps. We're going to uh, talk about truss rods today and uh, the many fears of tightening them. People's afraid to tighten their truss rods, they're afraid to mess with it. They'll take their guitar to a, a shop somewhere and pay some dude big money, often too much money, to tighten their rod or loosen it or adjust it or set their neck relief or whatever. The old truss rods, you know, are most of them were like one-way rods as you tighten it, tighten the nut up at the, the end of it. Let me use this. When you tighten the nut up here, tighten it, that bends your bow backward. It bows your neck backwards this way, okay? And there's no adjustment for loosening it. You just loosen the rod and let the strings pull the neck back this way, okay? In fact, I made a little thing here. I'll show you. Check that out. Look at the saddle. Let's say, we'll call this end the saddle, and this ends where the nut would be, okay? So, you want perfect relief, about, uh, I like about 12 thousandths relief. When you tighten your truss rod, this is what happens to your neck. See the strings go down again the fretboard. When you loosen it too much, the strings pull it back. And, uh, well, that's the idea. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes you have problems there, but... Anyways, that's why they invented a two-way truss rod, which we're going to talk about. But that's how that works. When you tighten it, say if you've got good action on this end and good action on this end and the, near the center of your neck, the action's really hard, high, okay, and you tighten it, it's going to lower that in the very middle, mostly. If you loosen it and everything works right with, this, with a one-way rod, it's going to raise your action up in the center if it works right. Two-way truss rods are commonly used in newer instruments and uh, well they've been around for a while. Here's what they look like. Now you can see that uh, it's actually two rods and they're threaded together on, on one end usually or welded together on both ends actually they are they are uh, connected and when you tighten a, a two-way rod it does the same thing that I was just showing you right here when you tighten it it pulls that neck back but unlike the one-way way rod when you loosen it it has uh, the ability to force back bow or relief forward bow rather or relief into your neck. It forces it that way just in case the strings is not enough to do it and that happens quite often. The strings doesn't always work in your favor. So a two-way rod, you know, like I say, when you loosen it, so to speak, you can actually bend a forward bow into that neck that may not want any forward bow. It's what's so nice about two-way rods. Always use a tool that fits. Man, I cannot stress that enough. You know, once you round off that nut, or whatever it is, there's a lot of different, some of them's got a hex head, some of them's Allen key, some of them's uh, takes a flat screwdriver. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. I've almost got this one out already. But, you know, it's nothing to be afraid of. It, it's really not. If it starts getting really tight, there it comes. If it starts getting really tight, there's what that puppy looks like. That's your truss rod nut on this guitar. They're not all like that. Some of, of them are bullet shaped. Some, like I say, some of them's a hex head. Some of them's a Allen head. Some of them is just a flat screwdriver. Some, it, they're all kind of different shapes, but that's what it looks like. That's what so many people fear to turn. And you don't have to be afraid to adjust your own. If you're tightening it and it starts getting really hard to turn, then you might want to start to worry a little bit. But, you know, chances are it's not going to break 
unless you really go forcing relief into that thing. Put a little drop of 3-in-1 oil on it too. I always do that, especially if it's an old guitar that's hadn't been worked on for a long time. Some of the things you want to watch out for too when you're adjusting your own truss rod, and I always say loosen it first. Don't ever, ever take your truss rod cover off, stick a wrench in there and start tightening. Don't do that. Especially under string tension. Never tighten it under string tension. Someone made mention about uh, one of my videos. It looked like I was doing just that, but just as I put the wrench on the rod to adjust it, there was an edit right there, and I had detuned all the strings except the first and sixth one, so there wasn't any tension, very little on the neck. Anyways, always loosen it first. You know, you may have an instrument, and you don't know how long it's been since, or if anyone has ever turned that nut or adjusted that rod. Stick a wrench on it, try to tighten it, crack, you broke it. You know, broke the rod or stripped the threads. So always loosen it. That's working in the truss rod's favor. Help the truss rod. Say, when you are tightening it, okay, tighten it up, trying to get that back bow into it. Help it, man. Put the one end of the guitar something on each end or put a clamp a board and a clamp on it something to help bend it help force the neck in this direction as you are tightening it that takes a, a great amount of relief off of the rod anyways help it you know if you're trying to tighten it and your rod is getting your nuts getting really hard to turn you know put uh, a couple of small blocks leather of course between the blocks and the fretboard and put a board across like this and put a clamp in the middle to shove up on the center of the neck as you're tightening it not don't you know don't break it I'm just saying help it a little bit and it'll make that a lot easier to turn you can overdo that and break your neck if you you know go very much with the clamp so be careful doing that but it works, even loosening the rod. If it's a two-way rod and you're trying to get relief into it, you know, put something under each side of the neck, shove down on the center of the neck as you're putting relief into it. If that two-way rod is getting tight uh, as you're loosening it, and they do, they will. So uh, that's another thing to watch out for. Usually they have uh, what we call a 1032 threads. Almost all of them have that. Uh, all that is is you turn the nut ten times it moves one inch on the rod. You would never have to turn it that many times on a truss rod unless you're taking the nut off maybe. But that's all that is. Uh, and a lot of misunderstandings on some of my videos I've mentioned check the truss rod first before we do anything, any other repairs. And I would always say if the truss rod doesn't work we're pretty much done. Well, that's been misunderstood a lot. Uh, let me clear that up now. Usually, it, it's not done. You can take off, you can start on either end and take this fretboard off. It separates from the neck here, okay? Take the fretboard off and uh, there's usually a, a skunk strip, it's called, just a piece of wood that they glue in over top the truss rod so glue from the fretboard doesn't get down into the rod when they glue the fretboard on. Anyways, take the, if, if you break it or strip it, you got to take the uh, fretboard off, take out the skunk strip, and then get down, in, that exposes the rod, take it out, make a new one, or buy a new one, I've made plenty of them, I haven't made any for a long time, but I've made several before, uh, that's what I meant, the owner probably didn't want to spend that much money, because it gets expensive if you have to do that, and usually they don't want to do it, so that's what I meant if the truss rod doesn't work we're done unless the owner wants to spend another two three hundred bucks or whatever to replace the rod uh, but that yeah that 1032 that's just the, the tap size uh, you know it's a thread measurement is what it is and it's a standard that they use on almost every every uh, truss rod threads string gauges if you go uh, from, uh, well, depending on how tight or strong your neck is. <clears throat> Sometimes if you go up one string gauge, 
you're going to have to do a little truss rod adjustment. Sometimes you go down the gauge, you have to adjust a little bit for that. Your guitar is set up, it's actually built around a certain gauge of strings, and that's what their manufacturer recommends, and you should stick very close to that. You can actually pull a guitar apart by putting too heavy a strings on it. You know, the guitar wasn't designed for that. Uh, as you know, a lot of them, the adjustment is in the peg head end. Some of them's in the the body end. Uh, the body end ones, as you've seen on that bass that I had here, you often have to take the neck off of the guitar to get to that. And it's all guesswork. I mean, it, them kind are. You just got to adjust where you think it needs, put the neck back on, tighten up the strings, check it. If it's not right, loosen the strings, take the neck back off. And... Uh, Reverend guitars, by the way, I think uh, some other ones do it too. They have a couple of little screws in the neck plate that goes on the back of the guitar where the neck bolts are. Uh, Reverend guitars has a couple screws that you just loosen a little bit and it holds the plate in place. So, you know, you can take the neck loose without actually taking it clear off and the plate falling off and all that. Or you can take the neck off and the plate will stay there. That's a real uh, nice idea, I think. Uh, Hats off to them for thinking of that. Uh, let's see, what else? The old one-way truss rods have, uh, it's usually called an anchor in the end, opposite end of the adjustment nut. And that anchor is to dig into the wood and hold the rod to keep the whole rod from spinning as you're turning the nut. Uh, but that's uh, different. I'll show you a picture of that. I think I have one here. Like I say, the newer the newer rods, the two-way adjustable rods, you know, are totally set up different from that. They're not the same at all. Some of the uh, one-way rods have uh, like what they call a uh, a bearing block, which bears pressure against the wood as you're tightening the nut. A bearing block is, you know, where all that pressure is. That's on the old ones as well. I might have a picture of that. I'll put it on here if I can find it. And the old rods, uh, Martin used what they call, called a J-channel in a lot of their guitars with the one-way rods in them. And uh, it was just uh, to help support the truss rod itself. And it will support the neck too. It helped support the neck as well. It was usually like a, I think a quarter inch threaded rod and it sat down inside of that J channel and then the whole thing sat down into a a uh, channel routed into the neck and that's how that worked so like I say don't ever be afraid to adjust your rod <laughs> you know play with your rod man the only thing you should fear about it is if it starts like I said if it starts getting tight and feeling really hard to turn and maybe you can help it a little bit like I said and showed you to do uh, you know, kind of help it along, and if it's still very hard to turn, very tight, you need to stop because you can break, snap the rod, will break like that. One of those two rods and a double one will break, two-way one. Uh, you know, just be aware of what you're doing and be careful, and don't over tighten it. And like I said, if you have, if you have good relief up here at your nut, or good relief, good action up here at your nut, and good action down toward the body but the center is very high action tighten your rod up and that's what happens it brings that action down or if you have buzzing going on usually in along the center of your fretboard but uh, and maybe it buzzes up here even a little bit it's not always nut action causes your buzzing too much too tight and too much back bow will cause your buzzing too sometimes you'll see a guitar that's got fairly good looking action and all of a sudden down toward the body, the string starts to leave the fretboard very rapidly, like that, the way that looks. Usually you have too much back bow when you see that. So you get in there and loosen it just enough. If you don't have uh, things to measure it with, you've watched my other videos, uh, how to set neck relief. I say I like mine at about 12 thousandths on most guitars. And basses too, electric basses. But that's not always the case. Some people likes more, some people likes less. It depends on the individual. 
But the idea is, you know, to watch the center of your neck, near the center, along the center, and, uh, you know, as you tighten it, you're going to get that. As you loosen it, you're going to get that. Of course, I'm over-exaggerating there a little bit, but you get the idea, I hope. And like I say, pay attention to how that feels. If it gets tight and hard to turn and you're kind of helping it along like I told you, you need to stop because you're pushing your, <laughs> your limits a little bit there. You could break it or strip the threads. Uh... But that's uh, shed some light maybe on truss rod adjustment for you. Don't be afraid to try it. Always loosen it first. Uh, never tighten it with the string tension up to tension. Don't ever do that. Just keep those things in mind and help it a little if it gets tight. And you'll, uh, uh, you'll be okay, I think. I hope that helps some of you all in the questions about truss rod adjustment and how trusses work. I uh, don't know what's coming up next, but keep it here at the house. It never sleeps, because whatever it will be is going to be good. Probably. It might, might not be too good. I don't know, man. Who knows? Thanks for watching and keeping it here, guys. And the new subscribers, man, thank you. Thank the old ones. I'll catch you on another video real soon. Cheers to you.